Hey, what's up, radio? Welcome to episode number 65 here on season number two. And today we are getting into stash added more stocks. These videos are meant for educational purposes only and not meant to be taken as financial advice. You are responsible for your assets and to protect them. So always, always please make sure you do your own research. So stash a t on top of adding 10 like literally last week or two weeks ago they just recently added another 10 and we will go ahead and run through those really quickly and then i'll give you some of my personal thoughts on some individual stocks and then we will leave it right there and and like i said this is my speculative opinion so take it for what it is it's my personal belief and I, a lot of these stocks actually all these stocks i haven't even done any research into this would be merely what i know based upon what i've seen in the media and that kind of thing so let's go ahead and take a look at the actual stocks all right so so they released alibaba which is a chinese technology company it's going to be basically like the amazon of the chinese world from my understanding of what i've heard boeing is going to be you know an airplane kind of company they also you know make air force one cisco is a networking company i've seen them make like servers and that kind of thing i don't know a whole lot about them exxon mobile oil gas and oil powerhouse home depot home improvement store in every city pretty much nike footwear footwear foot, footwear and then also apparel snapchat is a app that was created for phones and it's a, like a social media platform similar to i would say similar to compare it to like instagram would be pretty much a similarity or maybe even like a musically more popular with, with the younger crowd starbucks coffee you know that the coca-cola company and then also johnson and johnson so those are these are those are the, the the new stocks that they added and like like I was saying before most of them are going to be huge market cap kind of companies as far as it goes for me personally I, I I'm not investing into any of these companies and that's not because I do not want to that's just because I want to get my ETF figured out and the percentages figured out on those I want to get my ETF set up correctly before I go look into invest into maybe a higher risk type of stock instead of investing into just ETF. So that's where I'm at with my portfolio. If you're sitting there and you're like, okay, like that's great, you know, worry about your ETFs, but I'm looking at stocks and and what stocks do you like and what stocks would you be looking to get into if your portfolio was already correctly managed and then you also had the funds to purchase some stocks. So there's three I, I, I would look at, speculative look at, which would be Alibaba, Exxon Mobil, and then also Starbucks. And, and the reason for Exxon Mobil is I think that this company, first of all, it's huge, but I like that gas and oil, they are in, in gas and oil, but I look for them in the future to shift from gas and oil as the reserves start to dry up or whatever and go into maybe a hydrogen or electric or something like that, some other alternative energy. And I think that they're in the process of developing, developing that right now. And so I, I hope that I hope that they are. And if they are, I think that that'll set them up for long term, even 20 more years, 30 more years down the road when people are like, OK, well, this energy source is now in demand and Exxon Mobil is leading that. However, like I said, that's my speculative opinion. So take it for what it's worth. Make sure to do your own research on that. I like Starbucks from the practical side of it. I like the side of Starbucks where it's like, hey, I typically stop by the coffee shop to get a whatever Vente Mocha Frappuccino with two shots of hazelnut in there. But today, you know what? I'm gonna take that $6 that I would pay for that drink and I'm going to buy $5 of it fractionally into Starbucks because hey, why not make my money work for me than put it to a company where they can make it work for themselves? So that's what I'm saying with regards to that. It makes sense from a practical standpoint. It's really easy to see like, instead of going to Starbucks today, I invested $5 into Starbucks. You could do that with investing into ETS, but I think practically it's like, I didn't go here and then I can buy stock in that company. And I like that for that reason. And then lastly, Alibaba, I've been hearing a lot of good things about them. As far as I know though, I don't know a whole lot. I just knew that they are a China-based company and typically China investments, investments into companies that are in China are going to be a lot more risky or a lot more volatile compared to investing into US companies. So that's all I would consider if you're looking at investing into Alibaba. But like I did say, this is my speculative opinion. So always please do your research before investing. We will leave it right there. Let's go ahead and dive into the question of the day, which is if you were given a PhD degree, but had no more knowledge of the subject of the degree besides what you have now, what degree would you want to be given? So for me, there's two ways of looking at this. There's like the logical way of looking at it. And then there's like non-logical way of looking at it. And 
for me, the logical way would be like a PhD in psychology because that's what my bachelor's degree is in. And then also because I'm getting two associate's degrees, one in marketing and, and then the other one in small business entrepreneurship, small business management and entrepreneurship, it would make sense maybe for me to get a PhD into business. However, if you're like non-logically, like what's your experience? Like maybe a PhD in like woodworking might be good, YouTube, cooking, food, eating food in general, coaching might be a good thing for a PhD. I mean, there's other things that I could think of from a non-logical standpoint, but logically looking at it and educationally looking at it, it would make sense for me saying that I, I took classes in these areas, so I would probably have most knowledge in that area. That's what my answer would be for as far as a PhD. You got both logically and then like non-logically. And, and I don't know why I said like a PhD in the stock market or financial services, but one of those ones would be pretty cool too. Like I was saying, if you had any questions regarding Stash, Acorns, Robinhood, as well as general investing advice, business, Etsy coaching, post those questions down below. Don't forget to subscribe up here and check out my Stash Recap February edition. Check out this video right here. And as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it.